What's going on everybody? It's Richard Koberger here, the Blue Collar Nerd, and in this video I'm going to be going over what to do if you are not getting very good battery life out of your field iPads. So I'm going to start with the biggest thing, and it is also the most annoying thing, and that is checking the iPad's battery health. So batteries degrade over time. Every time a battery goes through a charge cycle, meaning it's charged all the way up and drained all the way down, every charge cycle chips away at the battery's health little by little. So older batteries that have been used more will have a lower maximum capacity. And there are also other factors that will affect how quickly a battery degrades, and unfortunately because of the conditions that field devices are usually in, batteries in those devices tend to degrade faster than average. So for example, extreme heat or extreme cold, those are both bad for batteries. So if you're an HVAC technician taking this iPad into a 130 plus degree attic or working outside in the snow, it's not great for the battery. So to check the battery health on an iPhone is very simple. You can just go to settings and then battery and then there's this battery health section. But unfortunately, that same feature is not available on iPads for some reason. So in order to check the battery health on an iPad, we're going to need a third-party software. The best one that I found for Windows is called 3U Tools. I'll put a link down in the description, but it's just the number three, the letter U, dot com. Or if you use a Mac, there is a similar application called Coconut Battery for Mac. Download and install that and then plug in the iPad in question. The iPad might ask you if you want to trust this computer, hit trust, you might have to put in your pin code, and then you will get a screen full of metrics about that iPad. And there are two metrics that we are interested here. The first one is battery life. So 100% is a perfect score. You probably won't see that unless you just took this thing out of the box. If you're in the 90s, you're doing just fine. If you're in the upper 80s, you're doing okay. Lower 80s, it's starting to get iffy. And once you dip below 80%, that's really going to be pretty noticeable. The battery will clearly not last as long as it used to. The other metric we're looking at is charge times. That's the amount of charge cycles that this battery has gone through. Even if the battery life is looking good, if the charge cycles are getting like up over a thousand, you might want to consider replacing that battery anyway because it can cause other problems like not sending enough voltage and causing the device to restart randomly and stuff like that. So if those metrics aren't looking great, you don't necessarily have to replace the entire device, although that you could, that's one way to handle it. But if it's not that old of a device, you don't have to do that. You can just take it to the Apple store or to a local repair shop and they will replace just the battery. I would recommend doing this check about quarterly on all of your devices. So once per quarter, when all the techs are in for a meeting or whatever, just call in all the iPads, plug them in one by one and run this check. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's dig into the iPad settings and see some things that we can change in order to optimize for battery life. So I've got my iPad here. So one of the most impactful things that we can do is to disable notifications for any apps that we don't absolutely need notifications from. And that's because every time you get a notification, it's going to light up the screen. For battery life, the less screen on time, the better. So for example, I've got Facebook here. Uh, I don't really need banners or lock screen notifications or really even notification center notifications for this. Just badges are probably fine. Badges are those little red icons that sit on top of the app icon. So comb through all of those and turn off the lock screen notification center and banner notifications for any apps that you don't absolutely need them from. Next, I would go under display and brightness and check your auto lock settings. You really shouldn't have this set to never unless you have a really good reason. If you have it set to never, then you run the risk of leaving the iPad somewhere and forgetting to manually lock it, and then it will never lock and you're just burning through the battery at that point. Next, we're going to look under privacy and location services. And here we wanna look for everything that is set to always and make sure that that is absolutely necessary. Service Titan is one app that you will have to have set to always, and that's because it's tracking you to show the customer where you are and show dispatch where you are but comb through those apps and make sure that everything that's set to always absolutely needs it because always is going to use up more battery. Once you've done that, scroll to the bottom of that list and tap on system services. So you can probably turn most of these off, especially if this is specifically a work device that you just use out in the field and you're not using it as like a personal device. 
then you really don't need most of these services using your location. For example, HomeKit. The HomeKit system service is using my location to allow me to set up automations. For example, if I wanted my lights to turn on when I arrived home. But for a work device, like I said, probably don't need most of these. So I'm gonna turn most of these off. I am gonna leave on emergency calls and SOS because you know you never know, that one's kind of important. I'll also leave on Find My iPad so that if this thing gets lost, we can use Find My iPad to locate it still. HomeKit, I don't personally need location-based alerts on a work device. Off, off, I get this warning that says turning off location for networking and wireless may affect Bluetooth and Wi-Fi performance. It, it probably won't, I'm gonna turn it off anyways. Setting time zone, if you travel with this device and you want the time zone to automatically update, you'll wanna leave that on. But again, if it's a work device, you're probably not like flying with it. Off, 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 significant locations I also don't need. So I'm gonna turn that off. That like tracks you to say like, it, hey, you usually go home at 4.15, so here's the traffic at 4.15, you, you know. Everything under product improvement you can turn off. Share my location, if you use that, leave it on, I don't. All right, next let's look under Siri and search. So listen for, I don't wanna say it because I'm gonna trigger all your devices. Listen for, hey Siri. If you don't use Siri like that very often, I would toggle that off because it takes up battery for it to be listening for it. Keep in mind that turning that off doesn't mean you can't use Siri, you can still use it, you just have to like hold the home button down to pull it up. Now, another thing I recommend is setting up a Siri shortcut that automatically turns on low power mode once the battery goes under a certain threshold. So to do that, we're gonna look for shortcuts. We're going to hit this back button in the upper left-hand corner where it says shortcuts, and we are going to tap on automation. Then we're going to hit the plus button here at the top, and we're gonna choose create a personal automation. Scroll down and choose battery level. Choose the bottom option here, which is falls below. Right now it says 50%, but we can use this slider to adjust the threshold. So I'm gonna set mine at 35%. So anytime this iPad's battery falls below 35%, I want low power mode to automatically turn itself on. Then I'm going to hit next. I'm going to tap add action, and I'm going to search for low power. Set low power mode, turn low power mode on, hit next. Down here we have this toggle that says ask before running. I'm going to turn that off. I want it to do it all by itself. I'm going to confirm, don't ask. And then I'm going to hit done. And boom, now we have an automation that's going to automatically turn low power mode on anytime the battery falls below 35%. Another good thing to do back under settings and battery, check out this chart here to see what has been using the most battery. I would set it to the last three days to get a bigger picture. And then check out battery usage by app to see what's been eating up the most battery. You would expect to see your main app there like Service Titan, you would expect that to be taking up most of the battery because it's what you're using most of the time. But you might see something there that is surprising you. Maybe you have some alarm app that you're using that's actually taking up a, a ton of battery and you didn't even realize it. That's happened to me before. All right, those are the big ones. Those are the main settings that I would recommend changing. You can go pretty deep down this rabbit hole and tweak little things forever, but I don't wanna make this a 40 minute long video and the returns do start to diminish as you get really in the weeds. A few more tips, as obvious as it sounds, keep a charger in the van and charge in between your calls especially if you are using this same device as your GPS to navigate in between calls, make sure you have it plugged in while you're doing that because you are greatly increasing your screen on time and the location services by doing that. Try not to charge it over 80% more than necessary though, keeping the battery fully charged all the time is not great for it. GPS will absolutely chew through your battery. Also keep in mind if you are using the same device to run your calls and be your GPS in between calls, you will most likely be degrading that battery faster by doing all of that with it. It's a lot of screen on time, it's a lot of charge cycles, it's a lot of heat, it's just generally going to degrade the battery over time. Also, now that we know that extreme temperatures will degrade the battery faster, just keep that in mind. You know, sometimes you're going to have to take the iPad up into the hot attic or out into the cold, but avoid doing it where it's not necessary. One last tip, if you're not using an iPad, which I recommend using an iPad, but if you're not and you're using a phone and you know that phone has an OLED display, then you can save a little bit of battery on that by using night mode on that device. 
And that's because OLED displays, they don't have one big backlight the way LCD displays do. Instead, every little individual pixel is lit individually. So the ones that are black, those pixels are just off and therefore not using any power. Anyways, that's all I got for today. Be sure to hit like if you liked the video. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done that already. Hit that bell icon so that YouTube notifies you anytime I upload a new video. And leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Appreciate it. Peace.